Eddie. It now gives me uh, great uh, pleasure to welcome Katie Ghosh. Katie is the Chief Executive of the Electoral Reform Society, and it is a pleasure to welcome her to UKIP's conference. Four years ago, we had a referendum on the alternative vote, not in any sense the source of proportional representation, in fact a system which, if you can believe it, may be even less proportional than first past the post. In that referendum, I, I believe UKIP, uh, many of us that supported uh, that referendum, although probably so sotto voce, it wasn't the uh, largest element of UKIP campaigning, and I feel at least some of our members didn't feel necessarily as welcome as they might have been by the umbrella group uh, Yes to AB. And uh, I think the Electoral Reform Society as well uh, were unhappy about uh, that referendum and uh, only been allowed a choice on alternative votes. So I think for all concerned, it was not a, a satisfactory um, experience. But the Electoral Reform Society believes in real political reform, real proportional representation, and I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Katie Ghosh to come up to the stage and speak to us this morning. Hello conference, good morning. First of all, can you all hear me at the back and around the hall? Excellent. Firstly, a huge thank you for inviting me today. It's a great privilege to be speaking to you. Thank you, Mark, for your strong leadership on voting reform and the wider political reform agenda and for chairing this important discussion. At the Electoral Reform Society, we are passionate about building a better democracy and making our politics fit for the future. Over the last few years, we've been talking to more and more UKIP members, politicians and leaders, and we're now in a really strong position to work together towards our common goals. And that's in no small part down to the passion for a new way of doing politics shown by people in this party. Over the past year, we've seen a surge in UKIP backing for our campaign for a voting system where seats in Parliament match how people vote. I want to thank you for your support. It makes all the difference. The general election was a national scandal. You all know the figures. million UKIP votes for just one MP. Now, he's an outstanding MP, but even Douglas would say he could do with a few more colleagues. A few more colleagues to help him represent 14% of the voting public. Under a completely proportional system, 4 million votes would equal 82 MPs. Under our preferred system, which is the single transferable vote, where you have larger constituencies with a number of MPs, UKIP would still have over 50 MPs. That's 49 MPs denied to UKIP because of a voting system that's not fit for purpose. Put simply, UKIP and other smaller parties were cheated by First Past the Post on May 7th. That so many people were effectively disenfranchised by our voting system is hugely damaging for our democracy. It is fantastic that UKIP have been at the forefront of calls for a fairer way of picking our MPs, and it's been great to work alongside Nigel Farage, Douglas Carswell and Suzanne Evans, three champions of political reform. They, alongside politicians from four other parties, the Greens, Lib Dems, Plaid Cymru and the SNP, were part of an historic show of unity just after the election when half a million people signed petitions calling for seats to match votes. These parties presented those half a million voices for change to Number 10 Downing Street. The response from the government was dismissive. 
They said the issue of electoral reform had already been decided back in 2011. Yet think about how much politics has changed since the alternative vote referendum. Back then, smaller parties weren't commanding such large chunks of the vote. Since then, we've seen parties outside the two so-called main ones surge to their highest levels ever in British history. In 1955, Labour and the Conservatives got 98.8% of the vote. In 2015, that figure was just 67%. People are shopping around, exercising their democratic choices. No longer are they tied to one of the main parties based on class or who their parents voted for. We have seen a democratic revolution in this country, a breakthrough for parties outside the mainstream, like UKIP, yet our voting system is locking them out. There is another way. It's time the two biggest parties recognise that times have changed and the voting system needs to change with them. It's time for a fairer electoral system. At the Electoral Reform Society, we prefer the single transferable vote method. It's used in Northern Ireland, Ireland and the Australian Senate and for local elections in Scotland. I want to take this opportunity to present to you a voting system which fairly represents voters but also crucially doesn't break the constituency link. You still get MPs representing constituencies and not chosen from party lists. The single transferable vote is a candidate-centred proportional representation system invented by Thomas Hare in 1857. It's now used in Scottish local elections and in all elections in Northern Ireland except for Westminster ones, and it's used in a number of other countries around the world. Under STV, current constituencies would be combined together to cover, say, a city or a county so that voters would have a team of MPs. Rather than voting for a list, they would rank candidates of whichever or no party. It's their choice. Got a live example of a ballot paper for you here. So voters rank the candidates in order of preference, as you can see on this ballot paper one for the person they prefer, two for their next best, and so on until the voter is ranked as many candidates as they wish. It's their choice. How many votes are needed to win a seat? Well, the number of votes needed depends on the number of seats a constituency has. A quota is set on, based on the number of votes and seats. So, for instance, for a three-seat constituency, the quota is 25%, and in a four-seat constituency, it's 20%. What happens if a candidate gets more than the quota? Well, any candidate who gets more than the quota on first preferences is elected. Any votes over the quota are redistributed. What happens if no candidate reaches that, the, the quota in, in that constituency? Well, in that case, the worst performing candidate is knocked out and their votes are redistributed. What happens next? Well, that process carries on until all the seats are filled. I'm just going to give you a little snapshot now. And this is really to show you that there are no wasted votes under this system. So there we've got votes being redistributed because somebody's got more than what they need to be elected. And anything over what's needed goes to voters number two preference. And then we can also see the candidates being knocked out if they don't stand a chance. What are the strong benefits and what are the reasons behind us uh, promoting this system, which, as I said, have been, has been used for two sets of local elections now in Scotland, where voters and campaigners are increasingly familiar with it? 
I think one of the really important benefits is it retains the link. So the experience from Ireland suggests a really strong constituency link. Another reason is that electors have multiple representatives from which to choose, encouraging a sense of healthy competition. Something many of you have talked to me about is the distaste for party control, a distaste for party lists where the party, not the voter, is in control. There are no party lists with systems, so voters have the choice. You can choose between representatives of a single party or change their rankings between candidates, regardless of their party representative. And of course, crucially, it's a proportional system. It also rewards candidates with broad-based support, candidates who go the extra mile, knock on more doors, talk to more people who don't take their voters for granted. People often say to me, isn't it all a bit complicated? Voters do the voting, counters do the counting. All voters need to know is, is, is about ranking their preferred candidates. Who is their number one, who is their number two, and who is their number three? Um, I just want to share some of the things that people have been saying about the system. So there's a, a quote here from a, a Scottish Labour candidate who, who says there are now no-go areas, they're knocking on more doors. And then somebody who's talking about a conservative-minded perspective and having the chance to have their voice really count. There's a really common theme at the moment in politics of people feeling that their vote is wasted. And under this system, votes don't get wasted. People's voices are heard. And then a Scottish voter saying, I'd rather have a mix of people I can go to, that sort of sense that they, they can pick and choose. And maybe there's somebody who would really champion an issue that they felt strongly about, that they could go to in their local community. And I'm just going to end with um, this, this quote um, from a gentleman from Liverpool. You don't feel your vote is wasted because every vote counts wherever you are. Well, I've given you a flavour of the single transferable vote, and for us that's the solution to our broken voting system. And I hope this afternoon you will vote for the motion to adopt proportional voting whilst retaining a constituency link which STV can provide. And Brian Sylvester and Charles Davies are going to be putting forward that motion, so the best of luck to them with that. But it's not just the voting system that's broken. Look at the House of Lords, the only fully unelected chamber in the Western world. Here is an institution where party hacks and ex-staffers can claim £300 a day tax-free without having to prove they've done a jot of work. We showed last month that in the last parliament, £360,000 was claimed by peers in years they failed to vote even once. Let's be clear, simply appointing more peers isn't the way out of this, although UKIP having just three peers is indeed a disgrace. To rebalance the upper chamber strictly in line with the 2015 general election results would require the appointment of an additional 723 members, and that's clearly absurd. So what we need is an elected house where people can kick out those who have failed to represent them. It's time for major reform so we can open up the light of day on this unaccountable and crumbling chamber and crucially elect it using a just voting system that isn't a party stitch up. Measures like these, a fairer voting system and elected lords would be the first step on the path towards a better democracy. I know that UKIP members believe politics should be better than it is. I know you often feel that the system is rigged against you. I know you can also see the transformation these and other reforms could have on our democracy. So let's join forces to fight for a better politics. Together we can fix our broken establishment and build a better democracy. Thank you.